vocal harmonics, or should I say vocal harmonics, or should I say vocal harmonics? There are three particular systems that we use to code thought into sound language. Now, one of those systems involves the voice box. It's divided into two parts. One is that part there, and the other is that part there. And they work together in synchrony, usually producing the same note. It's up. Sometimes we can make those kinds of sounds. Now that's voice box stuff. Now the next level above that is what happens inside the throat. Now the throat is a resonant cavity, a resonant chamber. It has acoustic characteristics. Now if I narrow the length of the throat space, that uh, becomes more like that. And if I go back to normal and then I go back the other way, it becomes a very tonerous kind of thing. And this is what we use for very sad things or very happy things or very your noise. When someone says you've got a great voice, yes, I've got a great voice. What makes a great voice is practice. You practice your great voice until you're able to produce the great voice that you want to produce. So we characterize our voice, we become a character. Part of our identity is our sound, what we are able to make, how we generate our own personality through sound, and other people recognize and identify through that. Okay, now, this system of vocal harmonics that's part of the language, there are three parts. One, voice box. Second, throat. Third part is mouth. Now, it's what happens inside your mouth that makes the vowels work. Now, vowels are all musical notes, as in It's just we're not used to thinking about them in such things. Okay, so just a quick rendition of um, of, um sometimes. Where the sand bears can and the devils also. Yeah, the fish that are jumping. And can you hear them doing that? Bum just turns on the veil and say the sang is settled there. Beat the kinds of words and trying to musically exploit it. Cop on chanjong according to what the sound is that I'm trying to mark. And so I'm able to break through the normal systems of coding because I understand this thing. And it's just like understanding how to whistle. We understand how to pronounce particular words. Be, 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 ba, 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 Now we can, we can exaggerate that pronunciation by making it more nasally. Rather than go B, we go ba, 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 ba. Pong 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 Now I can do the same thing with my tongue up to ping ping pong 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 that's when my tongue turned up like it's the same thing in just a like a vowel pronunciation position Now I'm just making weird noises for some of you, but you can recognize that I'm using a musical component of the voice that is not 
recognized, not elaborated, not learned. Now this particular part of what we are as a communication creature is a very, very important thing. Now we evolved to do it perfectly. With language we were able to take that perfection and use it in other ways. But it came from the perfection of sound. It came from the ability to do things like the one voice chord. to learn from mastering the voice and as with many things you can only master it by lots and lots of practice over many many weeks months and years and after you've done it for a lot of years I've done it now for 28 years you'll be able to make the most amazing sounds consider the challenge this is part of your humanity. This is part of your genetic destiny. This is your inheritance. You have given, you were given the voice by all of the ancient voices that have ever sung and spoken. It's up to you to master it. Master human sound. Thank you.